and of the craft itself. What happened, however, after 24 hours, there was no sign of life. So it was assumed that either the ship was vacant or that the personage who were aboard were all dead. That later proved to be quite accurate and true. Now, after it was assumed that the uh, ETs who were aboard uh, were dead, they then decided they must find a way to get into the craft itself. Now, what happened was that uh, the exterior of the craft signified no way to get into the craft at all. But somebody had the, the bright idea of probing with a long pole, which we did, and they did. And lo and behold, uh, they did hit a button, and down came an uh, interior door, like a trap door. And uh, there was access, uh, of course, gained to the craft itself. At that point, of course, a boarding party uh, was uh, ventured inside the craft, and they found five bodies. Those bodies were diminutive in nature. They were basically humanoid. It was evident to the extraterrestrials of the Confederation that all governments are a manifestation of the material powers. Indeed, they immediately imposed strict secrecy about the meetings. They threatened people, including their own employees, in order to enforce the secrecy. At the peak of the Dark Age, the Keepers started to contact private citizens, scientists and artists. They also delivered messages and warnings to them, which were supposed to slowly sink into the consciousness of mankind. The Brothers of Space, as well as the Ashtar Commando, the Santina, and the Pleiadians belong to the Galactic Confederation. They are spiritually ascended planetary races, and they know the cosmic plan of the spiritual hierarchies. Hence, their task is to protect the evolution and development of planets of lower dimensions from global destruction. They are only officially permitted to land if mankind asks for help and is consciously aware of the meaning of its own existence. They are allowed to intervene if the whole planet is faced with global destruction because of unconscious influence or if large natural disasters threaten the survival of the human race. My first real exciting experience back in Highbridge, New Jersey in 1956, USA, was when a craft came in and beautiful angelic beings came out. They reminded me of angels. In fact, they reminded me of my wife. They came out and they gave me a message of love and peace and compassion that we should change our consciousness, raise it on this earth to love and compassion. Stop killing each other in the name of all these gods. Be good to each other. I listened and I felt very, very good. I asked where they were from. They said they had come from the, from the vicinity of the planet of Venus. They were golden-haired people with gold eyes, uh, uh, light, uh, light blue, and between five, six, and six feet tall. And the message they said was given to us to the people of Earth in many Bibles, many Bibles. It's in our scriptures. They came here thousands of years ago, and all our Bibles have their message in of peace and harmony, but we do not listen. This is the problem. We don't listen to what Moses told us, what Allah told us, what Jesus told us. We do not listen. If we would follow the rules and do what the scriptures say, there would be peace and harmony on this planet. The Galactic Confederation has developed a galactic rescue plan since our governments refuse to take notice of their positive suggestions, such as disarmament and environmental protection. In the emergency case of a global destruction by an atomic holocaust, or of a violent magnetic pole flip, 
millions of people will be evacuated in spaceships. During such action, over 10 million flying saucers would be sent out from the motherships, and people who are not afraid would be pulled on board through levitation beams. The spiritual keepers knew that with the beginning of the atomic age, mankind had arrived at the peak of the dark age. The climax of the separation had been reached. The new plan for mankind is the ascension and resurrection of mankind. The awakening and overcoming of the separation should replace Earth consciousness. Worldwide spiritual trance mediums were selected to receive these messages through telepathy or precipitation transmission in order for these mediums to spread the message of the ascension and of the new age worldwide. Pleiadians have always worked through me and around me as a presence. I do not have um, what me, most people would call physical contact. I've never really seen ships, uh, even though in 1981 when I was living in Taos, New Mexico, I awoke from a sleep state uh, in, in complete panic because there were three blue extraterrestrials in my bedroom hovering or, or putting their hands above my bed. So. I, I had that contact in 1981, and I never forgot it. I labeled it a dream, but I always knew it wasn't a dream. And the beings were small and very bright blue and kind of almond-eyed. Um, and when I began channeling the Pleiadians, I remembered that event in 1981. And I knew that extraterrestrials, that other life forms were real. And that's what gave me um, the courage, the belief to allow these beings who said they were from the Pleiades to speak through me. During the course of our um, friendship and um, our sharing of my body, um, they've taught me so many things. And what I'm wanting to share with you today is that the search for extraterrestrials um, that people are impulse to follow is a search that's very complex. It's not necessarily spaceships appearing in the skies or, or beings landing or showing up in your bedroom. What I'm discovering is that the merging with the gods returning, the gods returning to Eden, um, has to do with an infusion of our consciousness, understanding that other forms of intelligence can blend their consciousness with ours. We can learn to blend ours with theirs, and we come into a whole new level of operating on the planet. The basic message that um, the Pleiadians that work through me offer is that thought creates reality. They say they come from the future and they have learned how to penetrate uh, what they call the corridors of time and ride different webs work, web works of time and they've come into our reality to teach us about something that we need to change, that we need to implant um, within our within our basic values of life. And this is what they've given me, the gift that they've given me of restructuring or revaluing of, of who I am. It's not been easy, definitely. Um, I've changed so much that sometimes it's very difficult for me to relate to people and the ideas that they have um, not questioned over the years. The ideas that are instilled with us from the time we're children based on fear, um, our religious institutions, our educational systems. They never teach us to honor and love ourselves and to understand the mystery of the body first and then understand that the mystery of the body and the mind ends up reflecting itself and creating itself in the outside world. Part of my instruction at this time has been to speak openly so that others um, don't feel that they're going crazy. 
so that others can understand that there is this infusion of off-planetary intelligence coming to merge with our consciousness. Um, many of these beings have no idea how to make contact with us because we've been so programmed uh, to fear and programmed to um, interpret what we don't understand as something that would be bad. And unfortunately, we've been lost in this paradigm of thought that we are the most intelligent species that exist. And I believe that we're one of millions or billions and that the earth is now being reopened. The doorways that will connect us to other forms of life um, are gently and sometimes more than gently, sometimes with great collision.